The Wooden Railway Adventures of Thomas the Tank Engine, Episode 50, Thomas and Spencer. Special thanks to Nacho TV for suggesting this episode's title. The engines of the sheds had had a long, busy day of work. All of them, except for Thomas. And so because I did such a great job holding the flying kipper all by myself, Sir Topham Hatt gave me the day off. Lucky, said James. Just then, Spencer popped up. Spencer, what are you doing here? asked Henry. He's probably here to show off his new coat of paint, said Oliver. I have gotten a new coat of paint recently, yes, but that's not the reason I'm here, said Spencer. There's been some stuff happening on the mainland the last couple of days, and I'm beginning to grow a little worried. What sort of stuff? asked Gordon. Well, some stuff that involves the military engines, and a diesel that says he escaped from scrap. I'm thinking this may have something to do with the diesels from the other railway, but I can't be too sure. The mainland engines are pretty occupied at the moment, and I know... The answer would pretty much be no, but I was wondering if one of you would maybe help me investigate what's going on. Thomas turned to face Spencer. It's my day off today, he said, and I still have some time left of the day, so I can maybe come over and help you out. The engines were speechless, but Spencer was very grateful. That evening, Thomas and Spencer puffed up to the Vickerstown Bridge. I'm ready when you are, Thomas, said Spencer. I'm ready, said Thomas. And the two engines puffed onto the mainland. So what's been happening here on the mainland, Spencer? Well, you see, the other night there was a storm that passed by the mainland. And then the next day, the main, the military engines came to the mainland. They said their base had been destroyed in the storm. But the storm wasn't really that bad, other than high winds and heavy rains. It couldn't have been the cause of the destruction of the base. And then the next day, a green diesel named Jericho came onto the mainland. Jericho, huh? Yeah, wait, stop. That's him over there. He looks a little familiar. He does look familiar. He he looks like one of the diesels that helped Diesel 10 take over Sodor. Only he looks like a different color. Oh look, he's coming. Quick, switch lines. So Jericho says he escaped from a horrible railway, huh? Yep. That's a lie if I ever heard one. How's it going, Jericho? Well, it's all going alright. Most of the mainland engines don't suspect a thing. Most of them? Yes. It seems Spencer might be on to me or something. He brought Thomas over from Sodor, probably to spy on me and see what I'm up to. Well, don't let them figure out the plan, okay? Alright, I'll try my best. Remember, Travis, I'm the one who saved you from that scrapyard, and I can send you back there just as easily. Yes, sir. Alrighty, boss, 
You're ready to go. Thank you, Mao. Soon the guard's whistle blew and the Mauler left with his train. After the Mallard left, Jericho rolled into the station. Coast clear, he said to his driver, and his driver got out and went into one of the rooms in the station. Jericho didn't see Thomas and Spencer nearby. They were spying on him and waiting to see what he would do next. In the yard, Buddy was showing Roxanne how to shun trains. The most important rule when it comes to shunting is to think ahead. You need to know which trains are coming and what they're going to be pulling. Right, said Roxanne. Think ahead. Don't leave everything until the last minute. Exactly, said Buddy. Just then, Morty puffed up. Hey buddy, the controller wants you to go to the top station, he said. Alright, buddy. I'll see you later, Roxanne. And buddy hurried away to the top station. Back at the top station, Jericho was still waiting for his driver. And he still hadn't seen Thompson Spencer spying on him. Just then, buddy puffed up. Hi Jericho, he said. Just then, Jericho's driver stepped out of the controller's office. Hey, what's your driver doing in the controller's office? asked Buddy. But Jericho didn't answer. His driver scrambled into his cab, and Jericho raced back to the point and quickly raced down the other line. He sped away, and Buddy chased after him. Thomas and Spencer had seen this, Come on, Thomas, let's go, said Spencer. And the two raced away down the line. As the two engines quickly turned around, Jericho raced past the T-switch. Buddy came and turned around and he sped after him. And Thomas and Spencer followed. Jericho soon realized, however, that he was heading for the drawbridge. And the drawbridge had been raised so that a large barge could go underneath. I'm going to have to jump for it, said Jericho. But he couldn't make it. Right when he reached the top of the bridge, he tumbled over the edge and landed in the barge. And the barge was swept away by the current, taking Jericho with it. Buddy, Spencer, and Thomas pulled up to the drawbridge. Bother, said Thomas. We almost had him. Never mind, said Buddy. He'll probably just drift out to sea where he can't cause any more trouble. What was he doing at the top station? asked Spencer. I saw his driver come out of the controller's office, said Buddy. But I have no idea what he was doing in there. It's a mystery that will have to remain unsolved, said Thomas. It's just like you said, he'll dr probably drift out to sea where he can't cause any more trouble. Maybe his barge will capsize and he'll sink to the bottom of the sea, said Spencer. That will show him. Well, Spencer, said Thomas, it was actually kind of nice that we could share this adventure together, but I should probably be getting back to Solar now. It's going to be morning soon and I'll need to get back to work. So Buddy and Spencer moved out of the way, and Thomas puffed away back onto Sodor. And once he was gone, the two engines went back to the sheds. Glad to put the day's events behind them.